That's what you work care about. Let's do double short. Oh, God. It's a breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Time for us to take you through the pages of a national daily, as we call it, off the press. And we have a Zika Unyai took a public affairs analyst. He's on standby. He joins the conversation via Zoom. Ezekiel Yaitouk, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you. It's always such a pleasure, a privilege for me to be with you people. Thanks for having me. All right, then uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, we start off with the leadership. Now, the bold uh, caption for the leadership talks about the presidential screening. NDLEA wants drug tests for Osibajo, uh, Tinubu, Amechi orders. So this is really interesting. It's gotten a lot of reactions. As a matter of fact, a lot of people think that this is a, you know, a development, a new development to the political scene. Now, right APC leaders or right APC leadership says PDP aspirant orders to follow. Yahaya Bello picks uh, 100 million naira nomination form. Amoshu to declare next week. Amechi mid South East delegates in Uwere. Despite denial, National Hospital cancer treatment machine not working. Why should we be in denial? Troops kill 30 terrorists. Explosion claims three soldiers in Kassina. Kaduna train attack victims spend 30 days in captivity. I mean, that's a lot of time. Senator Men's Terrorism Act bans payment of ransom. At the time where you have, um, you know, victims or family of the victims saying we're willing to have this negotiation. Zamfara de deposes two emirs, district head over banditry. Hmm. And uh, we just uh, move away from the leadership this morning. That's the much we can take. Thank you so much. All right, away from the leadership, we'll slide on next to the Punch newspaper. The lead story for this morning is on the Electoral Act. More commissioners are stepped down as Buhari's ministers refuse to go. Uh, with uh, about three writers or more there, let's see. Uh, Governor Tambuwa's uh, 11 commissioners, SSG, Chief of Staff, resign. I'm also joined presidential race, Yahaya Bello, and uh, Wajuba Peak Forms. I won't resign, says Ngigi. NLC flees campaign to mid ASU strike. Above the masthead, there are some interesting stories. A Senate prohibits a ransom payment. Abductees families seek talks with bandits. Subsidy hits 1.35 trillion naira in four months. NNPC to deduct 672 billion naira. Drug tests, NMA bags, NDLEA, MBA demands legal backing. FG states uh, local government share 725 billion naira as federal allocation rises. EFCC extradite a fraud suspect to US over $148,000 scam. A Feniferi six unity government says Buhari has failed. Uh, just uh, below the picture there, uh, Lagos traders protest shooting of businessman Killer Cop uh, celebrator. These are here. Oh, I think I'm aware of that particular story. Apprentice uh, flees to Semi as Lagos' wife gives birth to quadruplet. Fire God's TB Joshua's property destroys Tom uh, Shelter. Ten die in Lagos Ibadan Road crashes. FRSC blames speeding. Uh, several stories on the punch, but let's just um, leave it at that. Away from the punch newspaper, we take a look at the Daily Independent. Insecurity. A Fanny Ferry advocates government of national unity, says it will midwife a new democratic government. Senate prohibits payment of ransom to kidnappers. And while we're seeking 150 billion naira Beijing finance facility, Delta State government is quoted on that. Banditry, Zamfara government detrones two emirs and district heads, uh, you know, in connection with banditry. And DLEA asks parties to make drug tests part of screening for aspirant. APC rules a special preference for Jonathan. Uh, that's uh, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And you find out calling on him to run unpatriotic, irresponsible, 
are your uh, Deba and Joe is quoted on that. It's ought to have Jonathan impose as consensus candidate. Saga is quoted. And just before we move away from that, federal government okays 853 million naira for consultants to concession Ajao Kuta Steel. And you also have approved 10.48 billion naira, 200, I beg your pardon, 27.09 million dollars for Ministry of Power. Politician and gross in 2023 poll while asked to strike lingers the uh, Labour Congress is quoted to say. That's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Independent. Away from the Daily Independent, uh, let's take the last story on paper for this morning, which is the nation. All right, 2023 battle for tickets pits governors against senators. With the right there, their tension in state over slots, parties moderate a struggle for opposition. Ministers insist no resignation before primary. Let's seek foreign aid to free abducted train passengers. All right, uh, let's see uh, more stories. APC get petition to disqualify Abiodun on the red strip below. Um, INEC resumes issuance of uh, PVCs in Lagos. Uh, burnt, oh, I can't really see that one, but let's uh, see if we can get more stories on that one. Uh, Ajakuta still Itakpe Iron Ore get 853 million naira revival uh, cash. Fraud, federal government uh, extradites uh, Nigerian suspects to the United States. Man kidnaps ex Lavadoza. The bulk of the story we can take on the nation this morning. Ezekiel, yeah, I talk. It's good to have you join us this morning, and we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. All right. But let's get straight to this. It's dominating all of the papers this morning. It talks about Senate, the Senate prohibiting payment of ransom to kidnappers. And what are your thoughts? The very first thing is our uh, inconsistencies in our policies, and again, leaving Nigerians in a state where we really don't know when the government is sincere, when the, you know, when we say government, a lot of times we always leave it to um, the executive, you know, the legislature, they are also part of government. So when you say government is holistic, we don't know when they are sincere, we don't know when they are serious. Now, if you say that you want to abolish, ban, prohibit the payment of ransom, the question number one is exactly what is the state policy that does not have any coloration of um, you know, confusion? Exactly what is the state policy towards these people? As at this morning or as at yesterday, some government officials are still referring to these people as bandits. Whereas a court of competent jurisdiction has declared them terrorists. Now, that gives you a conflicting body language and it, especially the people to persecute the war. They want to know that there is a certain body language of the commander in chief because there's something about the army. Who are the people taking this on right now? They, they, they kind of have been brought up to follow the order of their boss. And within this context, the boss, which is the commander in chief, is Mr. President. Exactly as you, you are a journalist, you are both in Nigeria, what would you say? Can you go to the street and ask the average Nigerian and ask, what do you think is Mr. President's disposition to this issue of terrorists in the North? And then you also do undercover kind of um, inve investigative journal journalism and go into the minds of the cops, go into the minds of the military. These are things that can be done. And then, unless there is a very clear body language from the military that wherever you are as bandits, we are going to smoke you out, wherever you are, then if you are unfortunate enough to be a victim directly or indirectly of the activities of these terrorists, at the back of your mind, something will tell you that something is going to be done. But if you have no confidence whatsoever that something will be done, and then you are told not to pay ransom, I mean, 
number one, it emboldens the people to just go, go, I don't know the word, the, the, the terrorists, it will embolden them. Whereas the average Nigerian will tell you, go and tell that to the Marines, you know, because I've got to get my people back. So I think that it, 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 it's, a, it's a, a right pronouncement. It's a global best practice, the right pronouncement. But they need to do more than talk. They need to let Nigerians know that they are ready to take this thing head on. All right. Uh, let's uh, look at some other stories, uh, you know, trending across some of the papers, uh, which is um, the Electoral Act. Let's see if we could just slide um, on it just a bit because we will be discussing that much later on the show. But let me just get your quick opinion concerning that. Uh, more commissioners stepped down as Buhari's and ministers refused to go. That's on the Punch newspaper. What are your thoughts, uh, Mr. Nya Etok? I want to bring in one, two, three perspectives and dimensions that people don't um, often talk about in this issue of resigning. Number one, I think it is moral recklessness that you want to be in office when you know that you cannot be effective in that office and you'll be paid for it. I'm contesting for the governorship of my state and I know what it takes me on a daily basis. In terms of time, don't bother about resources yet, in terms of time. I know that I've literally handed over the management of my estate and my company to a second uh, hand because I, I, I've got to have a, a second address, you know, to go back to. Because if I do that, my office will suffer. I know that there's a lot of consultations. You work till late at night and then you cannot wake up early in the morning. It is just a moral burden that you don't want to be paid for a job that you are not delivering on. That is number one. So if they say, they don't, you don't even need to be told to resign. Nobody asked me to hand over my company, as it were, to somebody else to run. Nobody told me. But something told me that I need to get the office running right. Civil service is not a reward center. It is a workstation where you manage the resources of the generality of the people. So why would you want to be in an office that you know you are not going to be effective and efficient in? You can't. We all know that. That's the bottom line. Number two, why do, what's the moral conscience for you to be paid? The first part is getting the work done, even if it was free, even if it was a committee that you were asked to give, given a national assignment to work on. The second one is being paid for a job you're not doing. What's your morals there? And of course, the third is this. What is it, apart from thinking that you are the only one that can do that job, apart from you, no other person can do it, you are so patriotic, you don't want to let somebody else do the job because you are too good at it, and Mr. President cannot find a replacement for you. The last question I ask you is this. What is there in that office that you don't want to leave? Are there certain contracts that money has just come out, you want to make sure you get it? Is it that you are using it to victimize people, to intimidate people, and to coerce people to follow you? Because if they don't do that, you will not make sure that they are paid, you will make sure that this and that. Do you want to use that office and that tool to hold on to people instead of giving the people reason to believe you and support you? When you put all these things together, it tells me that my vote, my support can never go to anybody that is still in the office, apart from those that are statutory, because like the governor, I mean, you can't leave the office, you can't resign, it won't be nice. Uh, not that you can't, but somehow the constitution covers you. And finally, these are people who just believe in impunity. Is their life, is their stock in trade. You know that going to the court, there is a chance that it can go against you. But these are people who have come to believe that they can handle the court, they can manipulate the court. How can the Attorney General of the Federation, the Minister of Justice, of all people, be involved in this? I'm not a lawyer, but I know that when you go to court, it can be this way, it can be that way. And for the parties, I think the call is on the parties. I'm happy that the APC has started saying, look, resign or forget it. Now, anybody that is still in office that comes for screening has disobeyed the, the order. You know, he said the, the law is complicated, but 
For me, I want the citizens to see these people as people who believe they are above the law and let them do whatever they want, but let them come and meet you and reject them, reject them, reject them. All right. Mm. Ezekiel Yaichuk, let's also look at um, the leadership newspaper this morning. And there's a concern about train, the Kaduna train attack victims. I mean, the fact that they have spent 30 days already in captivity. Um, what, what can they do now that you have the Senate prohibiting, you know, the payment of ransom? The government doesn't feel, seem like they will be able to go ahead in rescuing these persons who have been kidnapped. So, What's going to happen? What should the people now do? I, I, I first, in such a sensitive um, matter that I need to, um, I, I, I need to like balance out my emotions. Question number one: Where is Leah Sharibu? That's just one question. Where is Leah Sharibu? Leah Sharibu's case stands out that. Anybody with a conscience, with a heart that has some element of the milk of human kindness, and that even has wisdom. This a girl that was said, go, denounce your faith. She said, no, I can't denounce my faith. For a country that needs healing, that needs integration, that has a Muslim now as a president, if it was a Christian, it wouldn't make much impact as much. But a Muslim who says, I am for all faith, Muslims, Christians, and you cannot intimidate, harass, compel, coerce anybody to change her or his faith. And if this lady is being incarcerated on account of this, I have to show that I will not take it. But where is Mr. President on this Leah Sharibu's matter? Where is he? So if he has that attitude and body disposition to, to Leah Sharibu, I feel sorry for everybody that becomes a victim of a kidnap. And um, for the train uh, uh, victims, I just believe, I just pray that God will, you know, we always talk God. Because the God on earth, which is government, is not there. So let's go to the God in heaven. That's, that's my prayer, that there will be a certain divine intervention, one way or the other, and that these people and the others will regain their freedom. So, so Isaac and Yaitik, you are saying that the people, especially the victims of this train, I mean, attack or kidnap, should fold their arms and wait for God to intervene. Because the government has failed. They, 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 should, they should pray for wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. They should pray for wisdom to know what to do. Because somebody is already out. I'm sure you're aware of that. So nobody is stopping you from paying. I'm told that a certain person paid 100 million. I don't know if that's true. He's already out. And the history shows that all the other people have been paying some money to get their people out. So I, I believe that I, I, I'm... No matter how you look at it, I'm a Christian, and my faith still stands, and I still believe in miracles. I do, I do, okay? But above all, there's a way that cement right onto a man, but the end of the ways of death or destruction. You can take an action that will hit you both ways, and both ways you lose. And you can take another action that will help you. Now, the only person that knows tomorrow is God, and that's not just, you know, um, uh, you know uh, phantom thinking. It's a fact. So I believe that they should ask God for wisdom on what to do. Wisdom is profitable to direct. I believe that very well. So it's not that they should fold their arms and wait for God. No, it's that they should ask God for wisdom on what to do. There's always room for divine intervention. He, 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 could, he could even give a lead as to, you know, God can lead you or wisdom can lead you to somebody you can talk to that can give you information, very, very strategic information that can make things work out faster. A lot of times we think we know it all. No, that's the reason why we have faith. And for me, faith is active. It works. All right, uh, let's uh, stay with the Punch newspaper. Just above the masthead, there is a story on the economy, uh, specifically subsidy hits 1.35 trillion naira in four months 
NNPC to deduct 672 billion. Uh, Mr. Nyaetok, where are we headed with this issue of uh, fuel scarcity, or, or sorry, uh, fuel subsidy, and uh, you know the warnings that we have gotten from the World Bank over time on this particular issue? I have maintained a very, very, very consistent position right from the time of President Jonathan. Fuel subsidy is a fraud against the poor. At the, at the risk of being misunderstood, I have several SUVs, several, and I know the amount of fuel all these V8 engines consume. The, the fuel I consume alone as an individual is probably more than what, 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 I don't know, I don't want to talk about my village, that's too small, but probably what my world consumes, you know, 80% of the people in my world, if not my local government, who are they? How much fuel do they use in a day? Now you are telling me about 1.35 trillion in four months. So you are talking in terms of maybe in a year going to four trillion. You know what a trillion is? Why don't you let this thing be? And then, you see, the problem is the poor man has, which I understand clearly is, if you don't enjoy this small one where you see, you no go see him again because these guys are dishonest and it's a fact. It's a sad fact. Why don't we have honest people that say the poor, your problem is transportation primarily. I'll take care of transportation, I'll take care of health care, I'll take care of housing. Those three things. And of course, education. What is the budget for health care, education, housing, and transportation put together? It's not even a quarter of the amount you are using in subsidy alone. Subsidy is a scam. Subsidy is a ripoff against the poor. There are so many stories and issues about subsidy that have not been interrogated. And I don't know why, why we don't do it. Number one, what is the exact subsidy? Number two, why are refineries not working? Let me tell you about refineries. Refineries, number one, are not working. And do you know that people are being paid every month who are working in refineries? They are being sent on courses. They are being put on maintenance. All sorts of things are being done on refineries that have been dormant over the past years. When they aggregate all these funds, it just shows a government that really either does not know what they are doing or they couldn't be bothered. It's really, really, really troubling, this issue of subsidy. My prayer is that we will stop all this analysis on media and Nigerians will wake up. I don't know, there's something about government of unity that is advocated by Afeniferi. I hope we can touch it. If not so, I would have liked to say something because that time has come when we have to, as a people, think I'm tired, I'm sick and tired of the blame game. I know what is taking me for me to say I want to contest for the governorship of my Akwaibom state. I know what is costing me at this stage of my life. I know what is costing my family. But for how long will we continue to be talking and, and sit in our comfort zones and expect something to be done? By who? These people? The issue of psychiatric evaluation and drug tests. These are matters that are genuine and germane because there's something fundamentally wrong with our leader. All right, Mr. Inye, 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 before we let you go, uh, Mercy has one final one. Um, so quickly, let, let's just take a look at this. I mean, I'm just uh, asking myself, which should we go for now? But let's quickly look at the issue of um, politicians being engrossed in 2023 elections while ASU strike still lingers. And this is what the NLC is quoted to say. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? We also have the Minister of Education, who's actually, you know, declared his intention to be part of the president. Minister of State. Minister of State, I beg your pardon. Yeah. I, 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 let me use one line on it and then ask myself a question that is very interesting and important to me. One line is this. 
you know, uh, uh, you know, there's there's this story of Rome. Um, Nero is, um, is is wearing headphones while Rome begins to burn. You know, uh, these are people whose their intention in office is not governance; it's politics. Their intention in office is not governance, but politics. I attended infrastructure, you know, um, discourse yesterday, and um, it was, I, I hardly slept at night. It was very revealing. I do not know how many people who want to be president or governors really understand the state of the finances of their country or their state. When I see all this thing that is going on, I think that I do no longer put any blame on the politicians, but on Nigerians. We need to wake up. We need to know that that time has come that this conversation about APC, ADA, and PDP has to stop. We should stop that conversation. Even the media should help me to stop that conversation and let the conversation be how can we raise a government that will help us? And not, we are not helpless. We are not helpless. We have 18 political parties. So many political parties have come together. Women and men of conscience have come together. They say, look, let's adopt ADC, African Democratic Congress. Let us profile the people. Let us create a new agenda. Let us create a government of national unity. Let us create an emergency rescue team for Nigeria. Let, us, let the conversation be, how can we create this team? Let that become the conversation. And not about minister who wants to contest when everything is falling. Because he couldn't care less. He didn't go there to uphold the things. He went there to politics. And there's a time for him to act. Let us move the conversation to how do we get into ADC and how do we get somebody that will be a good president? How do we get all these amazing people to come together and form a team? How can we rescue Nigeria? Afeni Ferre has hit a right note. What we need today is for us to focus and say, leave ADC and PDP and APC. No, leave them. Completely ignore them. Let them do what they want to do. Let Let's us go. see our future. The time is now. Let's How go, can guys. ADC put up a platform that will recruit and have a sort of leadership that is inclusive, that, that, that is focused, that has an agenda that Nigerians will believe in? Within one year, Nigeria will turn and head in the right direction and things will be okay. The conversation about these two parties, please, I want to appeal to the media to just leave them to do their thing. They are goats that will not stop eating in the yard. Ezekiel, right. yeah, I think we have to let you go now. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We appreciate your thoughts all the time. Thank you, and God bless you both. All right. Ezekiel is Ezekiel Yantok is a public affairs analyst and he joins us every Thursday right here to share his thoughts on some of the national issues making the round. And that's the size of it on off the press. We take a break down. But just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history. And when we return, we're heading straight to our first major conversation. Stay with us.